Hey guys, it's Michael Living here, and today I wanted to talk to you about retailing. I used to hate retailing, and you know what? I, I, I didn't even hate it. I didn't care about it. Retailing meant nothing to me. But my, you know, my employer would, he'd have these staff meetings and he would talk about retailing, and they would give us selling techniques. And the rep from the company would come in and she would talk to us about retailing and, and they would give us the statistics that if a client buys one product from you, they're going to come back in whatever percentage more likely loyal. Who cares? I don't give a shit about that because my book was full and I was making really good money and the you know potential $80 commission that I might have made on retail, to be honest, I didn't really care about it. I was making that in tips every day anyways. And I really, really wish that somebody would have explained way back then what retailing actually meant. Because all they were giving us was techniques, and I didn't become a hairdresser to sell. I became a hairdresser to have a really, really cool life. And once I became an owner and an educator, then all of a sudden things started to click as to what retailing actually meant. But unfortunately, I kind of had to figure it out for myself because nobody ever told me. So I'm going to tell you what my opinion is on retailing, and it's probably not going to be new to most of you. but um, but maybe you can show this to your staff if you're an owner and maybe you can say, see, this is what I've been telling you because sometimes you've got to have a, another voice that isn't yours in order to, to be heard. And which I experience all the time too. And it's like, that's all I've been telling you. People, will, my staff will go to a show and, he, and be, oh my God, he was so inspiring. He said this. And I'm like, I've said that to you a hundred times. Anyways. Okay. So here's the thing about retailing. Retailing is a barometer of how you are solving your client's hair problems. That's really what it is. You can absolutely be a successful hairdresser without retailing. There's just certain, you're just forgetting to retail and that's normal. A lot of us have done that, but it's really, really unusual for a high retailer to not also be a success, a very high service dollar hairdresser. In fact, I would say if you looked at the top five earners in my company straight across the board for service dollars, they're also the highest retailers. The reason is those people are all engaging in professional behavior all the time. Well, not all the time. We're having fun with our clients. We're making jokes and because we're having fun as hairdressers. We got into hairdressing to have fun. We didn't go into hairdressing, you know, to have this black and white play by the rules kind of thing. But those people also understand that they're there to solve their clients' hair problems. And that doesn't mean you have to spend an hour of the visit talking about your client's hair because that sucks and that's no fun for you and the client doesn't want to hear it either. But at the right moments when you're using a product or you're giving a styling lesson, you know, that's when that's when you your professional behavior as a hairdresser kicks in. People who don't retail usually aren't giving styling lessons. And if you're not giving styling lessons, then you're not helping your client to do their hair at home. And and this is now all of a sudden we're opening up this huge can of worms about professional behavior. So what retailing really is about is how much professional behavior you're engaging with with your clients at the right times. So let's talk about that styling lesson and what that styling lesson is really all about. When a client says to you, oh my God, I'll never be able to make my hair look like this, they're right. Because if they can make your hair look as good as you can make it look, you've not been working hard enough. But they should be able to get it pretty close. And they should be able to get it pretty close because you've given them a bit of a styling lesson. So there's a few things that are really, really valuable. And you're going to be able to take this back to the salon for your very first day. First of all, when you're putting product in somebody's hair, don't walk over to the back bar, squirt it in your hand, put the bottle down, and then come over to your client with a handful of goop and then just apply it to her hair and say, what are you doing this weekend? Bring the bottle over. There's a reason that you picked it. Explain why you picked it. If you're using four products in somebody's hair, the client is going to say, well, forget it. I can never do this. So find one thing that does the trick. I definitely, I'm all about a volumizing product on top and a smoothing product at the back. You know, hair tends to be thinner here and thicker here. I get all that. But if you're actually making a big soup of a bunch of stuff, that's ridiculous. And then when you're doing your blow dry, when you're doing your finishing, explain to them how to do the rough dry and all that kind of stuff. But don't start your blow dries at the back. Don't start the blow dries back here at the nape. Start your blow dries right at the front. First of all, you have half an hour to do this blow dry. Your client's not going to spend a half an hour with their arms behind them, you know, getting like a lactic burn in their shoulders and trying to do this. And then at 15 minutes in, they're like, oh my God, I, I'm late for work now. The back of my hair looks glorious. The front looks like shit, you know, and now they've got to go to work. Don't waste people's time by styling the backs of their hair. 
always, when you're giving a styling lesson to a client, always start from the front because you want to make these things easy for people. If a client can give you five minutes to do their hair, you're gonna, you've got to show them the right five minutes to spend. And if you're spending that five minutes on the back, well, that doesn't matter. Nobody sees the back. So I always worry about what's at the front. And just that one little thing alone is going to liberate your clients if they don't know this. So start at the front and work your way back, pulling all the hair forward, right? Round brushing forward, denmining forward. And if you take it all the way past the crown, by the, by the time you get to the back here, this stuff is already air dried. And if the, this... If the client can kind of leave the house pushing the good stuff on top of the bad stuff, they look decent. And every, everybody they're talking with, you know, other than the person behind them at the grocery store, everybody thinks they look great. So now at the end of that styling lesson, the client is feeling like, OK, cool, I could probably do this. Now they're going to be much more in, uh, they're much more likely to purchase a brush from you or maybe that fabulous hairspray that you used. It starts right from the beginning. Get a great consultation. Find out what's bothering the client about their hair. Fix it through product if you can't fix it through coloring or cutting. At the shampoo basin, give an absolute destroying, like just make them want to leave their husband shampoo conditioner. And by the way, when people shampoo, I don't know why people think they have to do it, a really aggressive, fast shampoo and then a slow conditioner. I do a massage with my shampoo and a massage with my conditioner, both at the same speed. Um, for me, it's like, why not give her a 10 minute massage as opposed to, you know, a th three minute massage? Like, why not just make the whole thing an amazing, luxurious, slow massage? Destroy them at the bowl. Chances are they're going to buy a shampoo or conditioner from you. Give them an amazing styling lesson. Chances are they're going to buy one of those styling products from you because they're going to want to recreate it at home. That That's really all it's about. That's how retailing happens. Retailing is organic because you're doing your job as a hairdresser. I've never sold a product to anybody. The only time I've ever actually sold product is when I'm super excited about a new product and the client walks in that I know it's the right product for and I'm like, girl, you have to buy this thing. Like this is going to change your life. This is it. Because we all know we have those miracle products. When I get something like that in that I know is just perfect for somebody, I grab it off the shelf, say, you need to take this, chuck it in her purse and we just ring it up. You know, that's the only time I ever actually sell anything. And even then that comes from a sincere place because I know it's going to be an amazing product for her. So start focusing on successful hairdresser behavior and you will watch your retail numbers climb. Do you think it's going to make him change? I'm just a boy with a new haircut and that's a pretty nice haircut. Charge it like a puzzle, hitting and wearing muscle.